Hey there, welcome to video number four in this series of learning this piece and how to learn a piece, the steps to take to learn a piece on the classical guitar. So in the very first video, we made very small sections, so we have little bites to work with. The second video, second step, we looked at all the notes and the musical markings, make sure we knew what everything on the page meant. In the third video, we worked on the rhythm. In this video, we will be looking at the dynamics. And if you are just beginning, then you may want to put this step at the end. But as you progress and as you can, then while before you even get the guitar in your hand, before you actually even play it on the guitar, you might have sight read it once to see if you wanted to play the piece. But before you actually start practicing the piece on the guitar, then you can actually go ahead and put in some dynamics and some volume swells and fades and make the music more interesting right here at this step. So one of the biggest things that beginners have a hard time with is knowing when to get louder and when to get softer and how to actually make their music more beautiful. And that's what this one is all about. That's what this step is all about. And there are a couple of rules that really help. Now, just like all rules, they are meant to be broken and they do not work all the time. But there, is a, there are a couple, of no, a couple of rules that work really well 95% of the time or even more in some pieces, but they work a lot of the time. They won't work all the time, but they work a lot. And so you might as well incorporate those habits and then you'll be good most of the way. And as you progress, then you'll learn when to break the rules. Okay, the very first one is don't accent the high note. And so if we look at this piece right here, then we can look at this line right here Right? This is a line, a musical line, and it just goes from here like that, right? So if you look at the shape, it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up, right? This is kind of the shape of that musical line right there. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to find the very highest note of that. In this case, this is our very highest note. And we want to make sure that we just don't let it pop out. We want to make sure that we're just going to put a big old no mark through it. We want to make sure that that note is not the loudest note around. It doesn't mean that it's quiet. It just means that it is softer than both this note and, well, being the highest note and that note. It's just more quiet than either of those. So we just want to make the high note not accented. That's basically what we're doing. So you can look at in this next line right here, then you can look at, here's our line that goes up and then it back down and does, kind of does that same little S curve again. Where's our high note? It's this note right here. And so that's the note we want to make sure that we don't accent it. So whenever you're going through, that's one thing you can do is just make sure you're not popping that. But it's difficult because on the guitar, the high notes want to pop out. You want to go da 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 da. For some reason on the guitar, it just wants to do that. But you have to practice extreme control, and so not letting it happen. And sometimes you do accent a high note. That's just one of those rules are meant to be broken things. But most times not. Only in big spots, like at the big climax of a section or a uh, climax of a piece or something like that, then you can do it. But not on this little stuff in the very first measure. You just don't, don't do it there. So then another rule is when the line is going up, you get quieter. And then when the line is going down, you get louder. So you can look at the, the relationships of notes to notes, and then you can get louder and softer. And so the line went up, so it got quieter. Then it went down, so it got uh, louder. And now it's going back up again, and so it'll get quieter again. And so that's the scheme of our, of our line right there. So that's, that's how we're going to do it. Now, let's actually clap that now and just those first five notes and put that into it. So we're going to start loud, get quiet, get louder again, and then get back quiet again. And so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to exaggerate this while we're doing it with our mouth. And when we're actually playing, it'll be more subtle and beautiful, but we want to be exaggerated and crazy while we're doing this just to really drill it into our heads what's going to happen. So let's do it. One, two, Count out loud, clap, and do it with the volume. It's a lot, but as time goes on, you'll get better at it. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, one. Great. Just those notes. One more time. 
Ready, go. One, two, three, four, one. Gets softer, gets louder, gets softer again. So really exaggerate that and you can really wrap your head around how's it gonna go. Before you get in the guitar and all the what string and what note and all that kind of business. It's just too much to deal with, really. You can do it much better right here just applying these rules. There will be times that you do this away from the guitar, you put it on the guitar and you don't like the way it sounds like that. Well then that's fine, you can change it then. But most of the time, this will work really well, these two rules. Don't accent the high note and if things are going up, get quieter. If they're going down, get louder. Those two rules will work a lot of the time. There's one more that I want to talk about that pertains to this piece. There are other rules as far as the dynamics. Swells and fades are dynamics. Loud and soft are dynamics. That's what dynamics are. There's another rule that applies to this piece as well, and that is when we have repeated notes. And so what we have right here is these two repeated notes right here, right? And whenever we have repeated notes, we don't want to play them statically. That's just kind of boring. Bomb, bomb, who cares? We want to make them get louder. So whenever we have repeated notes, 99 times out of 100, you want this to get louder, which means that the first one is quieter. Because if you play the first one loud, it's going to be really hard to play the second one louder than that. So basically, the first one is really loud. We can call that pianissimo, P. And then the second one is forte, is loud. So, dom, dom. So it's getting bigger. This moves the action forward. All of these rules with dynamics that we're talking about, they just serve to move the music forward. So let's do this with from the very beginning. But I've written out the, the dynamics for this on a whole sheet for each section. So you can actually practice this as well. So let's do that now. Let's just go through. We're going to clap this number one and do all of this together, counting out loud. Clapping it, all of this. Ready? Two, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. We're constantly doing this type of thing, getting louder, getting softer, exaggerating it. This will probably be a little bit difficult at first, and that's totally fine that it is. Just, just work with it. Now, if you are choosing to go ahead and do the hands together and getting the piece, getting your notes together all together, and then doing the dynamics at the end, then I still encourage you to come back and do it away from the guitar and wrap your head around it and then go back to the guitar and do it. Because if you actually are trying to figure all this out while you're actually playing the notes, it's a lot of stuff to deal with. And probably it's not going to be as good as if you just put the guitar down for two minutes, work it out, and then go back to the guitar and then do it once you've decided how it's going to go. So that is working the dynamics. As time goes on, you will want to spend more time on this step and, and with this um, in this spot, on this level, and also putting it before you even touch the instrument. It can just do wonderful things for your playing because then what happens is when we go to the next step in this next video, which is playing the right hand by itself, then you can actually put that into what you're doing right from the very beginning. And so that way you, you're working your dynamics in right from the very beginning, from the very first time you even play a note you're actually doing it, and it, the whole process then works much faster and much, much better to get the piece to a very high level. Instead of just getting all the notes and then trying to sprinkle on some dynamics and some beauty at the end, like some kind of finishing salt or some herbs on the top or something like that, herbs de Provence, then it just it never really gets that beautiful. And typically, people move to the next piece before they even get to that step anyway. And then so everything they play is bland. People have been playing for 30, 50 years and still play this way to where they learn the notes first, then try to do the dynamics, but then nothing really happens with the dynamics. So don't do that. Do this. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.